Rusty Wallace is one of the most iconic drivers in the history of the sport. The 1989 Winston Cup champion was a force in NASCAR for nearly 25 years, and picked up more than 50 wins along the way. Along with being a decorated Hall of Famer in the sport, Rusty Wallace may be the luckiest driver in the history of the sport. During a time where safety was not the best in NASCAR, Rusty Wallace not only survived some serious wrecks, but did so without serious injury. Today, we're going to take a look at Rusty's career and some of his worst wrecks throughout it. Right before we get into the story, make sure you guys leave a like if you do enjoy, and subscribe if you haven't already. We're on our way to 70,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate any support. Anyway, let's get right into it. Russell William Wallace Jr. was born on August 14, 1956 in Arnold, Missouri. Rusty grew up all around racing. His dad, Russell Sr., won more than 400 short track races in the Midwest in the 60s and 70s while Rusty was young. Rusty's first race was in 1972 at Lake Hill Speedway in Valley Park, Missouri. His dad gave him a 1968 Chevelle to begin his racing career. In 72, Wallace met Ken Schrader. The pair were both just teenagers at the time. Schrader started his racing career just one year before Rusty. Schrader later recalled, Rusty didn't start at the start of the year because he had to wait until he was 16. He had better stuff, but I had a year's experience on him. And we were good friends. But it got tested pretty good too. Rusty followed in his dad's footsteps and won around 200 races in the Midwest in the 70s, along with a pair of track championships. In the late 70s, Rusty Wallace and his friend Don Miller started their own company that made frame rails for race cars in order to fund Rusty's next big jump, racing in USAC. He went on to win Rookie of the Year in 1979 and finished second in the USAC standings in 1981, losing out to only Joe Rutman. In 1980, Roger Penske gave Wallace his first chance in NASCAR and Rusty took advantage of it. He finished second. And by the way, this was a Winston Cup race. Unfortunately, Wallace only raced one more race that season, also for Penske, but finished 14th. Still a really good effort. Despite his good run in Atlanta, Rusty still needed to work his way up the ladder. He only made one attempt in the Winston Cup series in 1983, and it ended in dramatic fashion. Black flag, they say. Consultation flag may be coming out. We've got another terrible crash. A serious crash again, and turn number two has claimed another victim, and there are still cars oh, that's spinning coming. and crashing. Car number 51 being torn up was Lenny Pond of Ettrick, Virginia. Rusty was trying to race his way into the Daytona 500, but was turned just halfway into the qualifying race. As he slid through the grass, the back of his car lifted up, and he got turned upside down. Once the roof clipped the grass, he tumbled four times and landed on his wheels. He was uninjured, but missed out on the 500. Remarkably, this is Wallace's only DNQ of his career. After winning the 1983 ASA Championship, he landed a ride for the 1984 Winston Cup season, driving for Cliff Stewart. In his two years with the team, Wallace had 12 top 10s, but failed to win a race. In 1986, Wallace made the switch to Blue Max Racing, where he had his first real success. In the fifth race with his new team, Rusty Wallace won at Bristol and earned his first career victory. Unlike his first couple of years, Rusty kept the car clean and ran consistently. He only retired from four races, all due to engine failures. He also went on to win the Fall Martinsville race, cementing his dominant short track reputation early in his career. Although statistically Rusty's 1987 season was almost the exact same as 86, the story could not have been more different. Wallace won two races, but this time they were both on road courses, Walkton's Glen and Riverside. 1988 was Rusty's breakout season. He was just telling Bill Elliott in the championship midway through the season after winning Riverside in Michigan. But his season took a very different turn on August 28th. And there was near tragedy that occurred on the racetrack just after the uh, uh, practice begun for the Winston Cup cars. 
This is Rusty Wallace in a violent end-over-end -end flip coming off of corner number four. The car overturned several times, finally coming to a rest on its wheels against the pit wall. In practice for the Bish 500 at Bristol, Rusty Wallace blew a tire and had a hard hit with the outside wall of turn four. The car got airborne and somehow managed to start rolling. Wallace flipped five times before coming to rest. At this point, Rusty was unconscious and not breathing. Jerry Punch worked to keep Wallace's airway open while the rescue crews worked as quickly as possible to get him out of the car. According to Wallace, this was a result of him choking from a ham sandwich he had that morning. Rusty is very adamant that if Dr. Punch wasn't there, then he would have died that day. Rusty stayed overnight at the hospital, but still took part in the race on Sunday. He finished in ninth place. But Rusty wouldn't let this brush with death affect him too much, as he would go on a tear to end the season. He won four of the last five races, but it was just too little too late in terms of the championship. Bill Elliott managed to snag the championship by only 24 points. 1989 was Rusty's year, as he won six races and the championship to go with it. This wasn't without controversy. In the Winston, Rusty spun out Daryl Waltrip on the second to last lap. Rusty won the race, and as his car was being pushed to victory lane, Waltrip and Wallace's crew broke out into a massive brawl. But this wasn't the only controversy, as there were reports of animosity growing between Rusty and team owner Raymond Beetle. For the 1990 season, the team landed the Miller Brewing Company as a sponsor, however the sponsor was actually more tied to Rusty than Beetle's team. If Rusty went to another team, the sponsor would follow him. Reportedly, Wallace exercised all options to leave the team, but was locked into a contract for 1990. The 1990 season didn't go as well for the team, as Wallace won only two races. After the season, he was out of a contract and reunited with Roger Penske for the 91 season, the man who had given Rusty his first shot over 10 years prior. As for Raymond Beetle, he left the sport and never returned after Rusty's departure. Interestingly enough, this was actually Roger Penske's first attempt at a Winston Cup race since 1980 with Rusty Wallace. This wasn't the match made in heaven right off the bat as many thought it would be, but they did manage three wins between 1991 and 92. 1993 was an interesting season, probably the most up and down year a NASCAR driver could have. Rusty Wallace had an engine failure in his Daytona Twin Qualifier race, so he started the 500 from the rear of the field. While trying to mount a comeback, with only 33 laps to go, Rusty had a massive wreck. Oh, trouble behind Rusty Wallace is turning over. Rusty Wallace, 20 feet in the air, spinning, crashing. Well, I'll tell you, when they're running that close together and jockeying around position, you just know that things like this are going to happen. Derek Cope slid up into Michael Waltrip, sending both of them into a spin. Cope just clipped Wallace in the right rear, and as soon as his car turned, he started to tumble. Rusty rolled twice before hitting the grass, and that's where his wild ride got wilder. His roof dug into the grass, and shot his car up into the air, and then flipped six more times. Rusty Wallace got out of the car completely okay. Rusty was completely uninjured in the wreck. Surely he had some bruising and soreness, but considering the wild ride he went on, he was very lucky. Rusty didn't let this wreck affect him as he went on to win the very next week at Rockingham. Rusty had three more top fives in a row before tragedy struck. The 1992 NASCAR Winston Cup champion and friend of Wallace's, Alan Kowicki, was killed in a helicopter crash before Bristol. Rusty went on to win Bristol and did a Polish victory lap to honor Allen and dedicated the win to him. Rusty won the next two races at North Wilkesboro and Martinsville, doing the Polish victory lap at each. In these three straight victories, Rusty led an incredible 905 laps. So this brings us to Taldega, where Rusty qualified a lowly 24th place his worst start since the Daytona 500. Rusty was pretty competitive all race, and even led the second most laps of the race behind only Dell Earnhardt. By the last lap, it was Ernie Irvin and Jimmy Spencer fighting for the win, while Earnhardt and Wallace were duking it out for third. 
coming to the line, Doe got into the back of Wallace, and this happened. Is he going to win the Winston 500? Jimmy Spencer is second. They come through the trioval. Checkered is waving. Ernie Evans wins, and Rusty spins and gets airborne and flips wildly right at the start finish line. Very reminiscent of his accident at Daytona. What a way. Yeah, he's moving. I see him moving around in the car. I see, I, I saw that. We see his head moving around. Yes, we do. Earnhardt tried to pass Rusty on the inside, but he came down to block. Unfortunately, the two made contact. After being tagged by Dell, Rusty did a complete 180 and the back of his car lifted up. Much like his Daytona crash, he landed on his hood, clipped the grass, and began flipping violently. There was a much more somber tone in the voice of the announcers after this wreck, as it was clearly much more violent than even his Daytona crash. An army of rescue workers rushed to the scene and were relieved to see Rusty moving in the car. However, this time Rusty did not walk away. They used the jaws of life to cut Rusty out of the car and took him out on a stretcher. Wallace was diagnosed with a moderate concussion, had severe bruising, and suffered a broken wrist after his left arm reportedly flew out of the window during the crash. Dell met safety crews at the scene and expressed his concern for his friend in a post-race interview. That's, you know, they dropped the flag two laps to go, bunch them up, that's what they're going to get, a slugfest. And I went down and talked to Rusty, I got his gloves, he took his gloves off, he was talking to me while they were getting him out of the car. And I just hope he ain't hurt seriously or nothing, and I hate it for the guys that work on his team, they're a good bunch of good boys, and I hate it happen. Later on, Wallace said, Dell said it was his fault that he should have slowed down. I said it was my fault that I shouldn't have tried to block him. Even though I got the total crap knocked out of me, it was just a racing accident. Dell would never try to hurt me. Like me, he's a family man, and we've both got too much to live for. The silver lining to these crashes was that it sped up the development of several safety features, most notably the roof flaps, and these have saved numerous lives undoubtedly. Now, back to Rusty. Of course, this man did not miss a single race after another near-death experience. But unlike his Daytona crash, he did not bounce back in the weeks to follow. He had four straight finishes outside the top 20 before he found his groove again. But this was enough to drop him from first to fifth in the points. By season's end, Rusty had a remarkable 10 wins, but it was just another inconsistent season that made him come 80 points short of Dale Earnhardt in the championship. To showcase how inconsistent Rusty was, he managed to either score a top 6 or finish 17th or worse in every race of the season. So in 30 races, he did not record a finish between 7th and 16th place. He either had a great day or a bad day. So this is the end of our story today, but not the end of Rusty's story. After this 1993 season, he scored 23 more wins and remained a championship contender until the early 2000s. After retiring after 2005, Rusty had a time in team ownership, broadcasting, and became part of the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2013. That's all for this video guys, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like and leave a comment down below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video. That's it from me for today, I'll see you guys in the next one, peace.